All right, so welcome to my channel. Make sure you subscribe. Today is the first video of this series, so I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna show you today how to properly make your water system for your chickens, your rabbits, all kinds of different animals using barrels. As you know, it's hot as can be out here in Florida and it doesn't seem to let off. So this is what we're gonna be making today. This is a 15 gallon food grade barrel with a 3 8 hole and with five nipples and then those are the feeders also 15 gallon with the lock ring with a three inch street elbow so we're going to show you how to make them and process them so here we go okay so now that we have our two barrels our first step that we're going to do is to clean them up we've been getting a lot of rain lately so they're quite nasty what I like about these pop rings is that they got the metal strip hook, so they pop right on and off. These lids pop on and off, which make it great for easy storage, easy access, but it keeps all the bugs out. And the rodents. So like I said, all of these are food grade, so it protects everything perfectly. And it keeps it fresh for the chickens, the goats, like I said, whatever animal it is that you're wanting to do. But these ones that we're making particularly are more for chickens. what marks the center of your barrel. So we're going to do five waters. So you're going to put that one dead center where it needs to be at the bottom and then your two is going to go beside it. So the easiest way for you to do this because you don't want the water you don't want the water to be too much at the bottom of your barrel because then all that water is wasted, it's sitting, it's going to get stagnant and it's not going to be good for the all-purpose system of your water. So you want to make sure that you hit that sweet spot when you're drilling it. You want to get it low enough to where you're cycling out all of your water, but yet high enough to where when your barrel's sitting on the ground, your chickens and your birds aren't throwing dirt into it and getting your nipples all dirty. So I have found over making these over and over again that that sweet spot is about 
about two and a half to three inches, depending on your barrel, above your your divot line. So see how there's like a dent right here? That's your divot line. So you want to be about two inches, two and a half inches on top of that. And you also want to make sure that they're going to be two inches apart from each other. So that way there's plenty enough space, plenty enough of a gap for each chicken to sit comfortably and drink water all at the same time. So here we go. So I'm going to show you all now how to mark it. So normally I wipe all of this stuff off, but for time's sake, I'm just going to show you. So you want to get your marker or whatever it is that you're going to use. And you want to go ahead and mark out where your holes are going to be. So remember I told you, you want to make sure that you use those arrows as your marker for your thinner holes. So there is my center. All right, you can't really see it, but there's the dot right there. What you're gonna do now is go two inches more this way and another two inches this way. So now you're gonna do the same exact thing on the opposite side. And there's your hole. Now I've learned as you're drilling these that you want to go slow, so that way it doesn't eat up your bit and it doesn't cause a whole bunch of threading. had quite a bit of orders this week. Alright, so as you see, all of the holes are now drilled. But you see on the inside, you see all of that plastic that's coming up? That you cannot have for the nipples. It's not going to sit level. So, what you want to do is you want to come in and you want to get all of that out so that way it sits nice and flush. the correct lock nut for the back and you want to make sure that when you're popping them in you're not popping them in too aggressively because until they're actually in their spot where they need to be you can break them very easily I mean let's be honest it's just plastic from China so what you want to do is do the little screws you're literally just going to twist it in. You're going to push it in just a tad bit to where you get it, you feel it, and then you're going to twist them in. So let me do it up here so you can see. You're going to put it in there to where it started, and then you're literally just going to twist them in. 
It's a little harder when it's up in the air. You need something to kind of push up against. But once you get it started, then you're good to go. So let me go ahead and get all of these in. That way you don't have to sit here with me. This is definitely the longest part of it. So you can hear once they're completely screwed in, I'm pretty sure y'all can hear that pop noise. That's so that way they're not too tight. They definitely have washers on them because it is water. So you want to make sure that you have two. And then there you go. They're all popped in. All right. So this is what the inside of it looks like. Oh, wrong way. All right. So this is what the inside looks like. What we're going to do now is we're going to add your back piece. Your lock. So not all of them come with these, but I personally like adding them to it, even though there's a washer and a lock. It just gives me that extra security knowing that it's locked on there with something else other than just being screwed in. So once you get those all popped on, and you're doing good. You want to make sure that you're not tightening them too much because they will break and you don't want it too tight because water is actually very heavy so once you put all of those pounds of pressure up against the wall you don't want to have something that's so tight that it's it's restricting and it doesn't have any flow with it so you definitely want to make sure that you find that sweet spot when you're tightening these down so there we go and you see all of them in there a little bit of water so now the only thing that's left to do with this barrel is to fill it up and water test it and you just leave it. You wanna make sure that the water is gonna hold tight. There's not gonna be any leaking because God forbid you wanna leave it and all of your water completely runs out and then you're screwed. So what we're gonna do is now check all of these nipples. So you see they're nice and dry and the chicken's gonna peck on it as so. Let's see if I can get this in here. So the chicken's gonna peck. And as the chicken pecks, it's going to fill up with water. And there they go. So each one of these are going to fill up with water. I hope you can see it. I don't know if you can. I'm having to hold my camera all weird. But as you can see, all of the nipples are working and have a good amount of water in them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this to set and um, come back and check it out. Make sure that everything's ran right. Alright guys, so the second part of this video is our feeder. So there's our water that's sitting over there. So now we're going to do the feeder. The feeder is a little more difficult because you have to let it cure for 24 hours um, and the hole that you drill, you have to make sure that your hands are really steady so you get a perfect circle instead of an oval or an odd shaped hole. Um, so what I like to use is again my Milwaukee. And Hull Dozer is what it's called. I love her. She 
he's a badass. Okay, so what you're gonna do is, again, I like everything to be heated. So you're gonna find your arrows, so you know that's the center of your barrel. And the same thing goes with the water. When you're cutting this, you don't want it too far at the bottom because then the food acts as, as a gravity feeder. So if you have it too low at the bottom, then none of your chickens are gonna be able to get to feed. It's not gonna gravity, pull, gravity fill as it should. So, and if you have it too high up, then the feed that's at the bottom, the chickens won't be able to get to and rodents will get it. So you have to find that sweet spot. And I have found that it's somewhere right where my hand is, okay? So I don't really have a measurement for it. I look at it for the barrel because each barrel is different when it comes to this. And I just kind of know where the sweet spot is at this point because of how many I've made. But I will definitely measure it so that way on the next video, you'll know. So let's get started. Here we go. I like it to put it in between my legs so it don't roll nowhere. All right, so here are my arrows. And that is my sweet spot. See, she is a badass. Alright, now, if you are doing this for the first time or working with tools for the first time, I am going to give you a heads up that the plastic does sling. I don't know if you can see it on my legs or not, but it does sling. So when the plastic slings, it is hot because it is melting it as it's cutting it. So it will burn your legs if you're not careful. So definitely be alert of that. I've gotten so used to it, I don't even feel it anymore. But that way you don't go in there and you know burn yourself up. So there's all the debris like we had last time. So we're going to go ahead and rinse that out. Right. Bam! Clean new barrel. Alright, so now our pipe. So I went through a lot of different pipes and I found that this is the best one. So the reason why is, you see this little nipple right here? All right, you see this little nipple? It kind of acts as like its own little nail or its own little crutch so that when the plastic pops in and it sits in this lip, that's now pushing up against it. So it's its own little lock. It also has the exact same curvature as a chicken's neck. So the chicken goes straight in, gets the feed, and it doesn't hurt it whatsoever. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place it inside of there and pop it. So that little lock that I just described to you is now locked into place inside of the barrel. So that way, if something happens to it, it is securely in there. But, of course, for extra precaution and to clear up the fact that you did just drill a hole into the barrel, we are going to caulk it. But not with any caulk. It's with a all-adhesive heat absorb caulking. It also has um, elements of um, poly, so that way when it does heat up, it does not shrink. It doesn't have mold. It doesn't have anything that's harmful or damaging to your chicken or to the environment. Because let's be honest, chickens are going to peck it. You don't want little pieces falling into their poop for them to eat or to degrade into the dirt, which then is going to cause chemicals. You want it to be as safe as possible. So let's go get the coffee gun. Normally for this type, this type 
kinds of projects. I personally like to use clear, um, but my supplier is out. So I have to use gray, which I'm not too happy about. I personally like the clean look of the clear, but it is what it is. So you're going to take your caulking gun. And mine's not working right now. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. And you're going to make a nice, thick line all the way around. Okay? Then you're going to go on the inside and do the same thing. Okay, so this is the part that gets a little bit gross. If it's just a wham bam, gotta hurry up and get this done moment, put a little spit on my finger, wipe it around. If I'm having to do a lot of barrels back to back, olive oil is going to be your best friend. Because it smooths everything out just perfectly. But I don't have any right now. So, old time spit is where it's at. you're done. Let me wipe this cock off. So, this is the barrel. Here's your feed. Let me get it up close here so you can see it. All nice and smooth. The inside, all cocked. Everything's cocked. So, there is your finished set. And that's how it's done. Stay tuned. We're going to have a whole bunch of different ones that we're making. We got pigs on this agenda and we even have little clouds. So keep watching. We got more to come.